Welcome to the Mamas of Fit podcast. In this episode, we have Leah Vandale, who is a professional wrestler with the WWE, sharing about her pregnancy, her birth, and the creation of her newsletter, Snatch, which is a resource to help us feel less alone as we are navigating the challenges of fertility, pregnancy, birth, and beyond. Welcome to the Mama Stay Fit Podcast. This is Gina, perinatal fitness trainer and birth doula. And I'm Roxanne, labor and delivery nurse and student midwife. And this is the Mama Stay Fit Podcast, where we empower you on your prenatal fitness, birth, and postpartum return to fitness journey. Our podcast shares how to move throughout your pregnancy to stay strong and comfortable because pain is not a requirement of pregnancy, understand the science of birth, and how to approach recovery after birth. We share our personal experience as mothers navigating this stage in our lives, plus our professional expertise as birth workers and fitness professionals. Our goal is to help you feel confident as you navigate the perinatal time frame for an empowering pregnancy, positive birth, and postpartum journey. We are glad to have you with us on this journey and that you have chosen us to support you. Welcome to the Mama to Fit podcast. In this episode, we have Leah Van Dale here, who is the founder of the newsletter Snatch, which is a new newsletter supporting pregnancy, birth, and the postpartum. And she's going to be here to share about her pregnancy journey, her birth story, and then also what inspired her to create this newsletter. So thanks so much for being here, Leah. Thank you so much for having me. And if you could just introduce yourselves to our listeners who may or may not be familiar with you. Sure. My name is Leah Van Dale. I am a new mom. I have an eight-month-old boy named Dimitri. Um, I don't know how many wrestling fans you have listening to your podcast, <laughs> but I am a professional wrestler for WWE. I uh, work under the name Carmella. Um, so maybe someone might know me from that. But um, yeah, my everyday life, I'm just a good old Leah. Yeah, it was really, we, um, I think we got connected with Sarah Rowe at first, and that's how we've kind of made our way into, like, the WWE wrestlers, like, world, world, (laughs) which has always been really exciting. But let's start with how was your pregnancy as a professional athlete? So you're a professional wrestler. I'm sure there had to be something or, like, challenges that you were facing while you were pregnant navigating this very physical career. Yeah, I mean, for me, the the biggest challenge was getting pregnant. And as a professional athlete, someone who's so in control of my body and always, you know, doing what I can to stay healthy and feeling my best. For me, I had um, I had a chemical pregnancy and then an ectopic pregnancy. So for me, that was so eye opening. Like, wait a minute, I can't just get pregnant and. <laughs> Like I eat healthy, I'm healthy, I work out, I am always in control of my body or so I thought. So for me to try to get pregnant was just very eye-opening. Like, wait a minute, I I can't believe I have fertility issues. Like what is happening? Why me, especially, um, you know, being a professional athlete and knowing like my body is my body of work and to know that I was so out of control of this process, uh, that was the most difficult part for me. Um, when I finally did fall pregnant, I, I'm not going to lie, the pregnancy went so smoothly. And I hate when we're like, oh, I'm pregnant and everything's great and all every, all is well. But I think because it was such a struggle for me to get pregnant, my pregnancy felt just I I enjoyed every single minute of it. I mean, don't get me wrong. The first trimester was hell, you know, always with, you know, morning sick. I didn't even have morning sickness. I had all day sickness. And I was very vocal about all of it. Once I finally did announce my pregnancy, I I kind of vlogged a lot about it, um, took behind the scenes videos and just to show like this part of it is not at all what you would think it might be. Maybe for some people it is. Um, but I, I really did have um, some struggles with feeling just awful. I felt like the best word I could use to describe it was feeling like wet inside like it just felt like a I felt like a wet blanket um and then once I was past the first trimester everything was a breeze I just felt like great I felt great in my body I worked out my entire pregnancy up until like the day before I gave birth well I was in the hospital for three days so I don't want to say the day before but the day I went into the hospital um to give birth I worked out so I felt great it was just that first trimester was crazy and you know you hear people talk about morning sickness and I just didn't realize how how much I would struggle in that first trimester. Um, oh, yeah. 
with, you know, food aversions and nausea and like all of it. It was just kind of crazy. And I just never thought I would get out of it. It felt like the longest period of time. So then when I did, I wanted to make sure I took note of that and was like, okay, I'm not going to forget how, you know, like the struggles I went through during that first trimester. Cause I'm like, why does no one talk about this? How come nobody warned me? How come nobody told me that this would not be that <laughs> much fun being pregnant in the beginning? Because, and I asked everyone and like anyone that I knew, like my mom, my mother-in-law, some of my friends are like, oh, you just like kind of deal with it and move on. I'm like, well, how come you don't talk about it? How come no one, you know, brings these things up? And even on social media, I didn't really see anyone, at least at that point in time, talking about how awful it was and it's like I wanted this so bad so I felt bad even complaining about it uh -huh. but it was just very real um and but again I would go through it all over again if I had to <laughs> I usually forget what the first trimester is like and then I get and pregnant so you're again, in it again and then yeah. I'm like oh this is awful <laughs> yeah and then I feel I feel so much better in the second trimester though with that those like six weeks I'm like I'm gonna die like this this is over for me. Yeah. <laughs> but for some people, it could be like 10 weeks long. Like it's. Or like their whole pregnancy. Or their whole like, pregnancy. Yeah. Ugh. Like. But yeah, it was like overnight. I was like, I'm good now. I'm I'm totally fine. Moving I, on. Yeah. That's probably why though. It's because <laughs> people just like block it from their memory. So they're like, yeah, that didn't happen. So I, totally. wasn't, I wasn't sick for 10 weeks at the beginning of this pregnancy, barfing my brains out every single day. Let's forget about that part because now, now it's fun. And I'm like, I don't want to block this out. I want to remember this. Like, I want to yeah. warn other women when they're going through it. Hey, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Did you have any struggles throughout your pregnancy with pregnancy after loss? So I had two losses before we got pregnant with our second child. And I was so anxious that whole pregnancy. And then I think it even led to like postpartum anxiety as well. So I don't know if you struggled with like pregnancy after loss as well. Cause I felt like the, like the magic of like pregnancy kind of like faded a little, especially in like the first half where I was just like really scared, like something was going to happen. I never really felt like safe in my pregnancy until like he was born. And then I was like, Oh, finally, I can breathe like he's here. Did you have like similar struggles at all? I did. I had, I feel like I was telling myself one thing but then acting another way. Like in my head, I had such anxiety about it. When I first got that positive test, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to wait and take another test tomorrow and see if it's still just as dark or if it's getting darker. And I would like compare them so much, like the lines. And it was just this, I, I shudder to think at the amount of money I spent on pregnancy tests. And I wouldn't tell my husband, I didn't tell anybody. I was just like taking these tests on the daily, just making sure or several times a day to make sure it still said positive. And it was just such a, a struggle going on in my head. And I felt like, but if I was speaking positively and I'm like, oh, it's going to be different this time around. This is a different pregnancy. I just kind of try to speak positively about it, even though internally I was struggling um, I think this, the positive talk about it helped me get through it. Cause it was like, okay, I know this could go wrong because it's happened twice now, but I'm going to put it out there in the universe that this is real. This is a new pregnancy. I'm feeling better. This is, this baby is meant for me. And I think that that is what helped me, but I felt it the entire pregnancy up until the day he was born. I still felt it after he was born. I had like, uh, if we get into my birth story, I can talk about that too. But it was just, uh, it was a struggle the whole time. Even now I have like intrusive thoughts and I'm like putting him in his crib at night. I'm like, is he going to wake up in the morning? Like it just, it still feels like I wanted it so bad that ugh, like, what if it gets taken away? Like I just, and I hate feeling that way, but it's just a real thing that, and an honest thing that happens to me all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's something that's really common after loss, especially like navigating that pregnancy and that postpartum. The one that my pregnancy with my son and that postpartum was like the hardest for me mentally, like physically, it was a breeze, like super easy pregnancy, no complications. But mentally, it was so tough. But I will say that my next two pregnancies, I felt mentally much better. And I don't know if it was because I it, saw I, therapy. I, it was, I, like I saw therapy, um, but I just felt more like confident in the process and like maybe a little bit more like there's only so much I could control 
But I definitely like struggled really big with like anxiety during that pregnancy and in that postpartum was like the hardest one. Yeah. I think for me. And I, I don't think people talk about it enough, sharing like their loss stories. Like I think I saw on your Instagram that you shared about your loss. And I think it helps to normalize that this is something that happens to one out of four of us. And for some of us, it happens multiple times because you also get told like, oh, it only happens once and then that's it. And then it happens again. And you're like, oh, my God, like I'm an anomaly, like the world is ending. Um, but I've had so many people reach out to me and be like, because you shared your story, I feel so much less alone in this experience. Like I know what to look out for. Like I know how I can support myself and my partner. Um, so I don't know if other if folks reached out to you to thank you for sharing about your loss story because it's I think it's something that like there's a lot of stigma and shame involved with, but it's so important to normalize that this is something that happens. It's nobody's fault, and we're just here to support each other during yeah. it. Like you don't have to grieve alone. You can like have people to support you through this, so you feel less alone that like you're not the only one experiencing this. Yeah, and that's exactly what why I did it as well. The first loss I had, I didn't tell anybody. It was only my my husband, my sister, my mom, like my immediate like family. Um, and then when it happened again, I was just I felt like a different person. I was changed forever, and I just was no longer the person I was before. And I felt like. I needed to get it off my chest. And because I do have such a big following on social media, I felt like this responsibility to be transparent, be vulnerable, and just be real and honest about my experience. Because I knew if I was feeling that like that, like you said, other women are too. And I decided to just put it out there. And I mean, women came out of the woodwork, even friends of mine confided in me and were, were like I had an ectopic pregnancy but I never told anyone and I'm like that is so wild and it it breaks my heart to know that women go through these things without any any support or not telling anyone and just knowing like hey like there's nothing you could have done to change that 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 was your journey and like that's what happened to you and you're not alone because it's happened like you said one in four like it, that's the statistic and it happens so much more often than we talk about. And it's just so important, I think, as women to rally around each other and lift each other up. And like, if, there's nothing you can say to someone who loses a baby. Like, there's nothing that can make it better, but you can just be there and sit in it with them so they're not alone. Let's take a break from this week's episode to talk about our sponsor, Needed. Needed is a nutrition company that optimizes nourishment for the perinatal time frame that both Roxanne and I have used from conception, pregnancy, postpartum our husbands use it so we're really big fans of needed and we highly recommend them to you one of the things that's often forgotten when we're preparing our bodies for pregnancy is taking a prenatal vitamin preparing our bodies for pregnancy is not just preparing physically as well as mentally but also our nutrient demand during pregnancy starts three months prior to actually getting pregnant so taking a prenatal vitamin at least three months before getting pregnant helps prepare your body to create baby for those first few weeks of life. But there's a side benefit. Some research suggests by taking a prenatal vitamin at least three months before pregnancy so that our nutrient levels are in the optimal level can help decrease your risk of having morning sickness or really all day sickness Just all during day, that all first week. trimester. By taking a prenatal vitamin, this can help keep your nutrient levels within that optimal level because Morning sickness, all day sickness could be related to nutrient deficits. What I really love about Needed is they have different options for your prenatal as well, depending on your preferences. They have a powder version, which I found to be really beneficial during the first trimester when I was very sensitive to all things. In addition to the powder, they also have a pill version of their prenatal, which I found to be easier to take later on in my pregnancy because I didn't have to make a smoothie or a drink. Like I could just take the pills and drink something. And so that was my preference once I entered into like the second and third trimester. And you can also take a prenatal just in general, like even if you're not pregnant or in the conception phase, you could take it postpartum as well, because it's really just a multivitamin that's really great for women during their childbearing years. And if you want to try out Needed's prenatal vitamin, you can use our code MAMASTAYPOD to get 20% off your first order or the first month of your subscription at thisisneeded.com. 
So let's get into your birth story. So you worked out all the way until the day before you went to the hospital, which was not the day before you gave birth, which sounds similar to my (laughs) first birth as well. Um, Let's talk about your birth. Like, how did your birth go? Like, what challenges do you have? Was it just like super smooth and easy? Probably not. But like, (laughs) I wish, I wish. I was actually watching the Kardashians this morning and it was Kourtney Kardashian's birth of her baby. And I was watching that and I literally started crying on the couch and I was like what is wrong I'm like I just have such so much sadness over the fact that my birth went nothing the way I wanted it to and I was I'm still grieving it eight months later so I guess a uh, long story short I had a plan of course I had a plan I have a doula I was like I'm gonna I was with the midwives here in Pittsburgh and but I was still gonna give birth in the hospital this is my first baby I want to make sure like everything is how I want it to be um so I started having contractions um, very early on on a Monday. I, this was Monday the 6th of November. And I had contractions like 4 a.m. I'm like, oh, okay, this is happening. I'm so excited. Um, and I messaged my doula. She's like, okay, let's start timing them. Just make sure, you know, everything is kind of progressing the way it should. And then I just went about my day. Um, went to the, I went and got acupuncture that day and my needles all popped out of me when I was on the table and my acupuncturist is like, okay, you're definitely in labor. Like you're contracting your, the needles won't even stay in you. I was like, this is great. I was so excited. Um, I went for a long walk that day. My husband and I walked to dinner and then, um, I'm timing my contractions. They're getting a little more, um, steady. They're around like seven, eight minutes apart. And my doula is like, all right, why don't you just like go to bed and let me know like when you need me, I'll come over and we'll start. Like, cause I was going to try to labor at home for as long as possible. Went to bed at about 10 o'clock. My husband's asleep. 10 minutes later, all of a sudden I'm in like agony. These contractions just started coming. And I felt like, I mean, I'm a professional wrestler. I feel like I handle pain pretty well. I have a high pain threshold and I was in so much pain. I could not believe these contractions. So I'm like on hands and knees in my living room. My, my doula's on the way over. And I told my husband, I'm like, you need to call her. I tell her to meet us at the hospital. Like this is, I, I can, this is not bearable. So we get in the car, we get to the hospital. It's like 11 o'clock at night. And they tell me I'm only, I think I'm three centimeters dilated, but I'm like 90% effaced. So they're like, this is okay, great. That's you know, good. We're doing it. Yeah, they're like, you're doing it. Like, if you want to stay, we're good. Like, let's start the process. They're like, all right, let's do it. So, like, there's no way I can go home with the, this pain. Like, I need to be here and, like, have my doula and I can just breathe. She's, like, pressing my hips, the whole nine. So, the the problem was there's no rooms. So, we had to get stuck in triage for so long. So, my husband was driving me nuts. I'm like, you go home. I don't need you right now. <laughs> I have my doula. Because he was like, the room was so small and he was getting anxiety. Like, there's no room in there. I'm like, you just go home. It's going to be fine. It's going to be a while. So, my mom tagged in. She came. She met me there. And then um, finally, we get our room. And I'm just in so much pain. I I wanted to give natural birth, no induction, no Pitocin, nothing. I just wanted to like go as natural as possible. By about 7 a.m., I'm like, give me the epidural. I can't do this. I just can't. And I just knew that it was going to be a while because I was still after all night in late, like in like having contractions, I was still only three centimeters dilated. So I'm like, I, this is going to be a while. I need something to help me. And I realized, you know, there's no shame in getting the epidural I I had such ideas around it in the beginning and then I'm like you know what if this is what I need to get through this it this is my journey so I got the epidural and now I'm feeling like a million bucks and it's now Monday or I'm sorry it's now Tuesday and it's afternoon I'm now only five centimeters dilated fast forward to that evening I'm only six centimeters dilated and I'm like what is happening like this is I've been at the hospital now for 24 hours I'm only six centimeters dilated but I'm 100 percent effaced so at least there was a little bit of you know You're some making hope and yeah. some progress You're making, change. making me some progress so they had to start me on Pitocin which I did not want so again now I didn't want the epidural got the epidural I did not want a Pitocin now I'm on Pitocin and it's still not working I'm not dilating so they have to put like a catheter in me. Oh, by the way, when I got my epidural, my water broke. So naturally. So I was like, okay, this is, we're, we're, we're moving along here. This is happening. So because my water broke, they were worried about putting the catheter in because of, you know, you can get an infection and it could not be 
the best thing for the baby. But they're wondering what, what is happening with these contractions. Why aren't they strong enough? They put the, con- the catheter in. They realize that the contractions, even though they hurt like hell, I'm like, why? what do you mean these aren't strong contractions? Because I'm feeling them still with the epidural. Um, but they just said it's just not pushing the baby down and l- letting me dilate the way I should. So we start upping the Pitocin. But now the baby's heart rate's dropping, and it's just like everything that could go wrong went wrong. I'm literally vomiting every 10 minutes. I'm not eating. It, it was just, it was hell. And I, it was just so not how I envisioned my birth going. I just wanted it to be this calm and relaxing and peaceful journey. And, you know, I like, I like to meditate and have breath work. And this is not at all what I wanted. And so I was just so devastated. So that whole night I didn't sleep. I'm still on the Pitocin, wake up on Wednesday morning and I'm only um, eight centimeters dilated. Mind you, I went to the hospital Monday night. It's Wednesday morning and I'm just feeling so defeated. And so I had gotten to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm just like, they were mentioning a C-section. And I, of course, wanted to avoid that. I wanted to try to give birth naturally after all these other things that I'm making, um, you know, um, compromises on. And I just figured, well, this last ditch effort, just please let me give birth naturally. Um, And I made the decision, all right, let's go with the C-section. And they said, well, do you want us to check one more time? And I happened to be 10 centimeters dilated at that point. So I'm like... Oh my God, this is amazing. Like it was such an emotional roller coaster because I had I'm like, okay, I made up my mind. We're, we're, we're going to do the C-section. I couldn't take vomiting anymore. I had been vomiting for 24 hours. Like I had nothing Dilla. left in me. And it was just, it was awful. And um, I had come to the conclusion that we're going to do the C-section. But then that's when they told me that I was ready to go. So um started pushing and... Then here he came. I pushed for like an hour at least, that's which was good with an epidural. It's not that's very really long good. at all. First baby. Um, yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't too too bad. Um, because they were like there was one part I guess where like the I was a hundred percent of face, but there was one little part that the head they were saying was going to get caught on. So they were like, maybe if you start pushing, we can you know push past that and he, we can get him down where he needs to be. And like with one push he wouldn't pass that little part of my um, uterus. And they were like, wow, okay, well, let's go. And so next thing you know, he was he was here. And then that was, again, another emotional roller coaster because I was so excited. They went to go hand him to me and he was blue and he wasn't responding. And because I had been in labor for so long, it was just, it was not good for the baby. And it was just so, I, I'm going to get emotional thinking about it. But they took him from me and it took like at least four minutes of them trying to like resuscitate him and give him everything he needed. Um, and I was just, I was a wreck. I was like sobbing. I'm like, is he okay? Is he okay? And it was going from like this amazing like high of finally pushing him out. And they went to go put him on my chest and I'm like reaching for him and they took him. And it was it was nothing. I'll never forget that feeling. And finally, they were able to get him where he needed to be. They gave him back to me. And it was just, but again, going back to thinking of how I had felt trying to get pregnant. And then during my pregnancy, like you're saying, pregnancy after loss. And I just thought, well, isn't this great? After all of this, I finally get my baby and this is not going to work out the way I wanted with the, the right result in the end. Um, but it did. And I'm just so grateful. And I'm just so grateful for the doctors that were there and the midwives and my doula and my husband and my mom. And it all ended up working out. But it just was, I was, I was in labor for 60 hours. It was such an insane journey. But I'm telling you all of this because for anyone listening who may have gone through something, like it makes me feel better to know that it, I'm not alone in that. Like things don't always go the way you want them to and that's okay at the end of the day a healthy baby is all that matters so I got my healthy baby and here we are sorry that was so long (laughs) no that was totally fine I think it is important to acknowledge that not everyone has this like picture perfect birth and sometimes we do have to make compromises on what our plan was based on 
the circumstances. And so epidurals are tools. Pitocin is a tool that's available to us if we need it. And so I, like, I'm thankful for advancements in medicine to give us the things that we potentially need during our labors. If we don't need them, great. But sometimes we, we do need them. And But it's still hard to let go of the dream that you had for your birth and how you were imagining meeting your baby and how you were imagining going through that process to like let go of that and accept like whatever the current circumstances is in. And then that battle of like grieving your birth, but also being super excited that your baby is here is like this weird conflict of like, well, I don't want to be disappointed in their birth because it brought them to me. And so then it becomes this weird battle. And something that really helped me with my first birth, because my first birth was similar to yours, where it was really long. All the things I didn't want, I got. Like, I did have a vaginal birth, but it was like, I was probably getting close to the point where people were going to start making different recommendations for me. Two and a half hours later. It was it was a process. <laughs> but oh, I struggled after gosh. I gave birth with being really disappointed with my experience but also being super excited that my baby was here and feeling like I couldn't have those conflicting emotions, but you can, like it doesn't, like being disappointed with what happened doesn't take away from your love and excitement for your baby, but it feels, it's hard to like accept that. And and I think it's something that a lot of folks struggle with after they give birth, especially if they have been planning this dream, like they've done all the preparation, they've exercised, they took the classes, they have the doula, and then it doesn't turn out the way they hoped. And it's like, well, what did I do wrong? Like, how, where did I mess up? And it's like, well, it wasn't like it wasn't necessarily anything you did wrong. It was just the That's circumstances that happened. Maybe like maybe there was something like that kind of went outside your control. But it's, it's still a struggle after you give birth. And now you got this baby and you're sore and you're like trying to figure out breastfeeding or and then you're like trying to also process like what happened and then add on the anxiety that you had from pregnancy, from managing pregnancy after loss. And it's like, I think it's something that a lot of people don't talk about, which like I think is kind of like the theme of this episode is there's things that we go through as women to bring our children into this world that we don't share enough about to help normalize so that we don't feel alone And I think that brings us to your newsletter, Snatch, that you've created. Yeah, exactly. I I knew when I had the losses, again, the floodgates that opened of women coming out and talking about their losses, that alone, I knew something, I knew there was something there. I just didn't know what it was. And I felt like, okay, if I'm being open and honest about this and other women are now interacting with me and interacting with each other like I see people commenting on my posts when I talk when I put it out there um it was kind of creating this connection in this community and I I just knew I wanted to do something with it I wasn't sure what and throughout my pregnancy I was just kind of like I'm like whatever is meant to be it's going to come to me this idea I just didn't want to force it or make it into anything that it wasn't and then it was towards the end of my third trimester uh I was like this this is what it's going to be. It's going to be me talking about all of these things that nobody talks about and normalizing it. And like, for example, during my pregnancy, I didn't even know about the fresh test. My doula told me about it. She was like, oh, you know, there's options when it comes to getting your gestational diabetes test. I'm like, really? I had no idea. I'm like, why does no one tell you that? She's like, I don't know. (laughs) They just don't. If I didn't have my doula, I would have taken that garbage drink that they force you to drink. And it's, it's just wild. There's so many different things that happen that nobody talks about. And I'm like, I'm going to talk about it. That's why I created Snatch. The name of in and of itself, it's like, well, who, why are you talking like that? And it's, <laughs> it's, it's built like that for a reason, to get people to feel a little uncomfortable or to get people feeling comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think that it's important to bring all of these things to women's att- like. Before you're pregnant or before you're a mom, it's like this weird world you know nothing about. And then once you're in it, all of a sudden, everyone that's in it knows it. It's like this secret club that you're a part of that nobody warned you about before. (laughs) And I feel like now that I'm in it, I want other women to be prepared for that. Whether you're in it or whether you're struggling with fertility or whether you're thinking about it or whether you're postpartum or you are a mom of... A 20-year-old, whatever it may be, there's all of these things that we go through 
that are important to talk about. And I created this newsletter where, you know, I have women like yourselves or um, doulas or therapists, just kind of like every week it's a new topic. And most of them so far have been something that I've personally struggled with, that I've made connections with other women about. Um, but over time, it can be about anything. And I think that's what I'm creating this community for all of the women that show up on whether it's the Instagram or I've created, um, it's called Snatch Chat. It's a private forum where women can log into. It doesn't cost anything. You just need an email and you get into this forum and it's a private chat where you can chat with other women like, hey, this happened to me during my third trimester. Did this happen to you? Or I have lactation consultants and doulas and therapists in there that are answering questions for women that they might not feel comfortable with posting on social media. Um, so it's just a safe place for women to feel okay with being a little out of control of whether it's their body or their mind or whatever it may be. We're all in this together. And that's what Snatch is about. We're talking about it. We're talking about things that nobody else wants to talk about. And I love it. I really love it. I get the weekly newsletter. I see the posts on Instagram yeah, of I what the them. topic of the week is. And what I really love is you have these professionals that are coming and just like spilling information and yeah. like readily sharing it. There's no gatekeeping, which I really love because there are some professionals out there that are like, you have to pay me to know my knowledge. But yeah. like everyone that you've had come on the newsletter, people that are in that forum are just like freely giving information because they generally want to help. And they want people to feel less alone. And they have this expertise. And they're like, and I want to share it with the world. Like, I, I make money in other ways. Like, but I want to help other people. And so I really love that about your newsletter. Because there are, like, professionals that are sharing that expertise to make this experience a little bit easier and less alone. Because for a lot of us, like, you might be the first one in your group of friends to have a baby or maybe like once you start having kids, you realize how isolated you start getting too, because it becomes a little bit harder to get out the door with like your little crew of people. Your little minions. Um, I mean, you could do it. <laughs> it's, and then when you do meet up with people, you don't always get a chance to talk, especially if you go to like a playground because you're child. chasing your child yeah. and exactly. prevent them from <laughs> offing themselves. Um, you're just jumping off things. And so it just starts to get kind of like lonely and you're trying to figure out like, is this just something weird for me that I'm going through? Like, I'm the only one that's struggling with this. Like, because social media is that highlight reel of like, I'm not going to post pictures of my kids crying and be like, this was my morning. <laughs> like, yeah. it's going to be the ones where they're <laughs> super happy and smiling with like ice cream. And so it's really easy to start thinking like, I'm the only one that's struggling. Yeah. And it's like, we're all struggling in different ways. And I think it's so important for us to share that. So it makes people feel less alone. And I absolutely love the newsletter and what you've created. And how can people sign up for it? Just on the like snatch.com or I don't, I don't know what the, I can't remember what the website is. It's snatch.co, C-O. Um, so snatch.co or on Instagram, it's at snatch for her. And yeah, it's again, everything's free that you don't have to pay for anything. It's just a great resource, a great tool. We have live Zooms with, uh, experts in the snatch chat you know we had a therapist last week talking about intrusive thoughts and I'm so glad that you mentioned that you know there's no gatekeeping here because that's exactly what it's about all of these experts that I've reached out to personally I'm like hey would you mind doing the newsletter and everyone asks oh how much do, do we have to pay to be a part of it I'm like you have you don't want you want to pay to be a part no like that's not at all what this is every every expert just wants to give their expertise and help out other women just from the goodness of their heart because they know personally that they've gone through this and that they just want to help. And that's what this entire community is about. And I, like, again, women like yourselves, I'm so grateful. Like, we're just reaching out to you on Instagram. Like, would you think you'd be interested? You're like, oh, of course. And it, that just means the world. And I think as women, especially moms, the more we can help each other out and not gatekeep and just be able to share our experiences with one another that's what snatch is all about so i'm so grateful for you guys for being a part of this like truly thank you for creating it I th when you reached out i was super excited we were all about just like word Giving vomiting information stuff. people yeah. are like maybe we should do less like <laughs> no is this, a, is I, this can't, I cannot <laughs> physically give less information because I'm, I'm like, like i want this you to isn't have enough. everything 90 that she seconds needs. isn't enough <laughs> 
Um, where else can people like follow you and like learn from you? So we've got snatch.co at snatch for her. We have your personal Instagram. Do you have like a, like a YouTube channel? Like I know you were talking about sharing like vlogs from your pregnancy. Yeah. All of that is just on my Instagram. I don't have the YouTube. Um, everything is just on, on Instagram for the most part. I'm not like a big TikToker or like YouTuber. I can't like keep up with all of that. I don't know how people do it. I commend everyone that's able to do all of that. (laughs) (laughs) But you can find all the information on Instagram. There's links on like the link in bio on Instagram where you can subscribe to the newsletter and you can sign up for the Snatch Chat. You just have to be approved for the Snatch Chat. And that's just me going through and just clicking yes, you're allowed to come in just because a lot of people will just, I I just want women to feel safe. So everyone needs to be approved and put in an email for that. But um, yeah, you can just go right on the Instagram and find all the information there. That's so awesome. Well, thank you so much, Leah, for coming on the podcast and sharing such a personal story of struggling with fertility, navigating pregnancy after loss, your birth story. And then thank you so much for creating this resource for women to community share their stories so that they're not alone. Because I personally found sharing my lost stories to be really therapeutic and healing for me. And just creating this community within your newsletter and the forum. So thank you again for coming on the podcast and sharing everything with our listeners. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I'm so grateful for you giving me this platform even to put this out there. So thank you so much. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Diaz, and I just wanted to share how much I absolutely loved the Beyond Postpartum Fitness Program. I wish I had found this program sooner, is all I want to say. I had had a twin birth and completed the 16th week uh, postpartum fitness program for Mama Stay Fit. And after that, I just started bouncing around from different programs to different programs. But I'd get to a certain point in the program where I felt like I would meet a space where I couldn't lift any heavier or I would, it would result in pain. At about 18 months postpartum, I actually injured my back trying to work through one of these programs that left me literally at ground zero, worse than I was post-birth. And that's when I found the Mama Stay Fit Beyond Postpartum Fitness Program. When I started this program four months ago, I literally could only squat a barbell. I didn't have a lot of pulling strength. I would, after movement, I'd be in a lot of pain. And once I started doing the program, I consistently for four months, I gradually started to get back my strength and my stability and wasn't in pain anymore when I was working out. The program includes a lot of your basic strength movements like squatting, deadlifting, pull-ups, bench pressing, all those things that you need strength, but the supporting exercises around it really also help build that core strength up and build a lot of stability that I was lacking. The program's also really exciting because the cycles change and the goals to reach cycle change. So you might be building some strength in one program or in one cycle and then it's going to lead you into endurance strength in the next cycle so it keeps it really exciting to be a part of a weekly program where the movements are changing they're building on each other but it's also your fitness goals are changing with each one and i really will use this program probably way beyond being postpartum now that i'm you know two and a half years postpartum and will use it as long as i can because i just love it so much i've never felt as strong as i have now since before i was pregnant and i really credit it to this program. I mean, the last cycle we did, I didn't have a single strict pull up before. And by the end of it, I could do 10. How exciting is that? That's awesome. I feel so strong. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode where Leah shares really personal stories about her struggles with fertility, navigating pregnancy after loss, navigating the disappointment of her birth, but still being super excited that her baby is here. It's really hard to sometimes share these harder experiences of motherhood while we're navigating to meet our baby and then after our baby is here. And so I have found it to be really helpful to share my story, to normalize it for others so that you feel less alone. So be sure to subscribe to Leah's newsletter, Snatch, so that you can hear stories from other women as they're navigating their pregnancies, their birth, and then also from experts that, again, are not gatekeeping information. We're just word vomiting everything that we know because we want to support you throughout your pregnancy. And if you want more support throughout your pregnancy, check out our online prenatal fitness programs and online childbirth education course. Our prenatal fitness programs are designed to help support a strong pregnancy, pain-free, and help you prepare for birth, while our childbirth education course is giving you the information that you need to navigate your birth experience whenever circumstances unfold. 
And if you're in the postpartum period or about to be in the postpartum period, check out our postpartum fitness programs or our postpartum education courses where we discuss what to expect in the postpartum period for both you and baby, what are normal signs and what are signs that you need to seek more help. And you can check out all of our offerings at mamastayfit.com and use code STORY10 to get 10% off as our thank you for listening to this entire episode. And this podcast is sponsored by Needed, a nutrition company focused on the perinatal time frame that both Gina and I have utilized during our preconception, pregnancies, and postpartums. And you can use code MAMASTAYPOD to get 20% off your first order or the first month of your subscription. 